Well, many people have heard of drones being used in various places all around the world, and yet many people aren't quite sure what their practical uses are. The Crime Museum, in partnership with the Kashmir World Foundation, is giving visitors a hands-on approach to learning the important role that drones do play in illegal wildlife trafficking all around the world. Here to talk about this, we've got the founder of the Kashmir World Foundation, uh, Princess Alia Pandolfi, and we also have Gray Gola, who's an intern with the Crime Museum. Good to see all of you, both of you. Welcome. Welcome. So, Gray, looks like we got some drones up here. What, what did you bring? True. Well, we have three here. Um, this one on the left is base, it's a modified version of what we actually have everyone build with our class, the Da Vinci Workshop. Here in the middle is another just um, example of a quadcopter. This one is fully assembled and ready to fly. And then over here we have a much larger hexacopter. Which will be u which we're using in our um, product bleh, in our process to um, protect um, sea turtles all over the beach. Oh wow! Well, so I guess the point is that uh, like when we think drones, we think of the errant drone that lands on the White House lawn, <laughs> or or we think of you know our military using them to take out targets somewhere around the world. Yeah. But these are practical uses for drones, right? Well, yeah, we usually, we go ahead, we go and we build them and then we go on to do more practical purposes like um, wildlife, con wildlife conservation, for example. Yeah. And Princess Amiya, I want to talk to you more about wildlife conservation because that's what the Kashmir Foundation, which you founded, is all about, right? That's right. Um, one of the most important things for my passion is to protect endangered species. And as I learned more about what was going on in Kruger National Park in South Africa with the rhinos and the elephants in Africa, um, I also learned that one of the best uses for drones could be to do broad area coverage. And if you think about Kruger National Park, it's about the size of New Jersey, and they only have about 400 rangers on the ground protecting the wildlife. So for that, it was essential to provide a tool that can actually help rangers find poachers. So our goal was to develop a drone that can actually um, process data on board as it's flying. So as you um, talked about the military drones mm -hmm. and the uses for those, um, they're not advanced. We're looking at state-of-the-art uh, technology that goes into the drones. So if you look at this one close up, there's actually a computer on board which allows us to program. And then once you add your sensors, different types of cameras and or sound, um, you can actually do a lot of work with this and find the poachers much more easily than if it was just a live stream video. So instead of the 400 officers looking for poachers over an area landmass the size of New Jersey, you have many more eyes. That's right. What? Now, do you also have night vision capability with the drones? Yes. Yeah, so depending on the mission that we would be um, working on, for example, let's say if we're talking about the um, poaching scenario in Kruger National Park in South Africa, most of the poaching occurs at night. So we would have to have thermal cameras. We would also have different types of sensors that would be integrated that can work with thermal because it does get really hot. And with thermal, you should be able to detect heat. But it gets so hot in South Africa, at nighttime, the temperature of the rocks, the animals, and anything else is pretty much the same. Oh, so it doesn't show a differential there. No. What are some of the animals that are most at risk of being poached? Um, uh, number one, I mean, I, I'm sure, like, just a couple of weeks ago, there was the issue about ivory crushing elephants. Um, over 100,000 elephants were poached last year. Over 1,200 rhinos that have been poached um, last year as well, and the numbers keep increasing. So our goal is to stop the poachers before they kill the animals. Um, although there are a lot of campaigns in terms of telling people not to use rhino horn or elephant tusks, I think it's also important for us to go in and stop the poachers before they kill any more animals. I think a lot of people are just interested in drones in general um, around here. And uh, Gray, you, tell us a little bit about this workshop where you can come and actually build your own drone. How cool is that? Yeah, so um, over four classes, um, we build a drone from the ground up. It looks a lot like that one. Like I said, you start with just the kit, all of the frame, just in pieces. You have to screw it all together. You have to put on the autopilot, the motors, all of the different parts. Have you, have you built any of these? Um, none of these are mine, but I have built two at home. Are they um, difficult to build? They're a lot simpler than you think. A lot of people think that they're incredibly difficult to build, but 
once you learn how to do it and with the instruction that we give, it's actually quite simple. So you, you come to the Kite Museum on certain dates, right? You have to come, what, three times is it? Yeah, there's three workshops three and then a flight day where okay. you actually fly your creation. And, and it, it's a little pricey, right? I mean, you have to pay for the supply. So how much yeah. does it cost? Um, well, a quadcopter kit is $500 and a hexacopter kit is $600. It's smaller than that. That's uh -huh. a much bigger frame. And, and that's more for our sea turtle protection project. Okay, so you're talking about how many of these arms stick out, like <laughs> spokes on a bicycle wheel, and that either six or four. Yeah. The quad is the four. The quad okay. is the four. Okay. Okay. And so what else do you get? You get the little propeller things, right? Of course. And yeah. then do you get, what, what's the gizmo in the middle? That, what's the, what's um, the thing that makes it work? Well, that's, that's, the auto, that's the autopilot that actually makes it fly, because you could never fly one of these fully manually. You need a computer to keep it stable in the air. Um, so that's what that does, and the autopilot also um, allows you to do autonomous missions where you can actually tell it to go to GPS waypoints without ever having to touch a controller. Oh, very cool. So the one that people would build would be similar to this one? Yes. Okay. And you brought a teeny weeny little drone here. Um, can we fly this thing? We can. All right. So, so nice. show us how it's done. Yeah. So hopefully it's still connected. Um, yes. Okay. All so. right. Here it goes. Taking off. I can hear it. Mm. Oh! There it goes. Yep. So this is much smaller, obviously, than anything you would build by hand. Um, a lot much safer to fly in here. Yeah, that's Look at that's that thing. Yeah. <laughs> there is a camera on that one, which should be live streaming on that little monitor. Oh, really? Yeah. So what are we seeing? Just if probably you turn around, you'll see the yeah. tabletop? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're pretty good at this, Greg. I'm, <laughs> you I've a gotten, time or two? Yeah. So who, who is good at this? I, mean, I would think that people, kids especially, that, that play a lot of video games would be really good at uh, using the remote control. That helps that I found I played a lot of video games, and I found that it's still quite difficult when you start. And But yeah, that definitely is a factor. Very, very cool. All right, so tell us once again how we can take part in this workshop. Well, um, you can go to our website, which is cashmoreworldfoundation.org. Org, and or you can also go to the Crime Museum's website because we will be hosting a workshop at the Crime Museum on July 9th, 16th, and the 23rd. Um, and the website for that is www.crimemuseum.org. All right, build your own drone, and uh, maybe you can get together with the Kashmir Foundation and help to stop poachers and do some good in the world, right? Good to see you. Princess and Greg, thanks for coming in today. And for more information about the Crime Museum's drone building workshop, go to crimemuseum.org. And we'll have more Let's Talk Live right after a quick break. Stay with us.